every sorrow, it would be worth every mile. A lifetime of labor is still worth it all if it rescues just one more soul. A lifetime of labor is still worth it all if it rescues just one more soul. Amen. Tonight, if you're listening and you don't know God, let this be the night of your salvation. That's our prayer tonight. There's just one soul is out there listening that you won't turn your radio off or anything without accepting Jesus tonight. And uh, Brother Kent will come give us some information at this time. Thank you, Brother Tony. Um, just a quick update. Um, the website that we have for our tithes and offerings is back up. Maintenance is over with. I don't know why they didn't do it in the middle of the night, but they just had to do it right in the middle of the day. Anyway, um, I'll see if I can ask them to change the maintenance schedule for us on that. I do know that we did just lose uh, feed. Um, it was probably uh, an issue with um, us playing videos, but um, we're still going to do it. So just hang in there. If it cuts me off again, I'll just pop it right back on there. So don't worry about that. Um, keep in mind that um, also you can mail in your uh, tithes and offerings uh, to P.O. Box 10,004. Danville, Virginia, 24543, and as always uh, on our website, uh, that seems to be working really well, and I want to thank the ones that already have done it, so that way we can just keep the lights on in here, so we can continue to do live streaming. So anyway, I'm going to pray for the offering, and then we'll be watching a video uh, from Wilburn and Wilburn, Help Me Help Someone. So let's pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you for this evening, Lord. We thank you for the privilege and opportunities that we have to worship you. And no matter what state or uh, situation we may be in, that we live in a free country that enables us, God, to worship you. We want to ask that you would just bless our offerings, Lord. Help us to take every uh, bit of money that we get here, Lord, and just help it to further your kingdom. Help us, Lord, to be able to... Uh, spread the gospel, uh, give to missionaries, uh, pay the bills that we have here, but also, Lord, uh, do the building project that you have for us to do. We thank you, Lord, for everything you do. These things we all ask in Christ's name. Amen. so caught up in life's little problems I start buying into believing I got them I really don't cause I can pick up a paper any day of the week and read about people much worse off than me I need I get so wrapped up in worrying about myself. I forget there's a great big old world full of somebody else. But I'm just one man with these two hands. I'm ready to reach, I'm ready to touch So much I can do That I haven't done Lord, help me There's a young girl in high heels with too much makeup on Taking less than she's worth Selling more than her soul God help her Eat it two tours and not And it through it all again 
Gets his dinner from a trash can And he sleeps on the bed God help him I'm gonna help him But I'm just one man With these two hands I'm ready to reach I'm ready to touch and Wilburn and Lord help me help someone. That's what we're talking about on Sunday nights for the next few weeks is so winning 101, how to win people to Jesus Christ. We've spent the last couple of weeks talking about soul winning. Tonight we're going to start into our outline point one, the soul winner's labor. The soul winner's labor. It's not an easy thing to win people to Christ. It's a task that is fought by the enemy. It's fought by the world. No one wants to hear the truth today. No one wants to hear the gospel. The flesh of man wants to earn its way to heaven, but that can never happen. There's a debt we cannot pay. I call it a sin debt. Man cannot pay. In a hundred lifetimes, man can never pay his sin debt and free him from the load of sin. So Christians must go out with the gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and we must tell the world what Christ has done for us. And they can also have the same thing done for them if they'll trust Jesus. First Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 2, talking about the soul winner's labor. It says, We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith. Soul winning is an absolute, total work of faith. You go out trusting God to take your vessel, and for the Holy Spirit of God to reach through you to the lost souls that are out there in the world, the people you come by every day, you work with, your family, your friends. It is a labor of faith. We don't know if we're going to win somebody or not, but we've got to take that chance. We've got to throw the gospel out there, and hopefully we'll reel in a soul for Jesus Christ. But remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God and our Father. It's a labor of love. To win souls, you've got to do it because you love people. And if you love Jesus, he's going to put that love for people down in your heart and down in your soul. You're going to love people. You're going to want people to be saved. You're going to care about the lost, the kind and the unkind, the friendly and the unfriendly. It makes no difference because you love their soul. You realize that there's a soul in that human being that's going to live somewhere forever. And you want that person to live with Jesus and not be separated from him in a place called hell for all of eternity. 
Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10 says, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed toward his name, and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you should show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope and to the end, that you be not slothful or lazy, but followers of them which through faith and patience inherit the promise, the promises. This labor of love has to be done diligently. It is such a battle for the enemy. It's a battle to win people who don't know Christ. There's sometimes an understanding gap, maybe an age gap, or maybe there's some uh, problems in life that people have an attitude toward trusting Christ and knowing Christ. So we have to work at it. It's a labor of love, and one that we're sure to work in time. We just have to wait and live by God's timetable and continue to water, weed, sow, sow the seed, weed it, fertilize it, keep working it until it grows and blossoms into a soul. Now, first of all, now I want to talk about the ministers determined not to faint. Ministers determined not to faint. We've got to have some soul winners who will not quit. We'll not give in, we'll not give out, we'll not give up. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. We're going to look at a long passage of Scripture here and break it down for you. But I want you to understand what it's saying here. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we receive mercy, we faint not. You see, the ministry is not simply just being good to people. The ministry is reaching people with the gospel. The ministry is sharing the word of God to influence somebody's heart and mind to trust Jesus Christ. Those who handle sharing the word of God have a duty, a sworn duty, because they're saved themselves. Someone cared enough to share the gospel with them. We've got a duty to share that same gospel with others around us because time's running out and eternity never runs short. Eternity never runs out. So those who are sharing and handling the word of God have a sacred duty not to quit, not to give up, or let up. We have to be consistent. We have to be faithful. You didn't catch a fish the first time you threw a line out in the water. And you're not going to win a soul the first time you tell them about Jesus either, most likely. You have to go back again and again and again. You're going to have to pray again and again and again. It's a labor of love, but you can't give up. That's what the devil wants you to do. He wants you to give up and quit. Sharing the gospel is a sacred trust, not to just the preacher, not just to the deacon or the Sunday school teacher. It's a sacred trust to every believer. Every believer should be a soul winner. Every man, every woman, every teenager, everyone should win souls. Second Corinthians 4 2 says, But we renounce the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling God, the word, our word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth. Our gospel ministry is not one of trickery or manipulation. I'm not here to trick you today. Listen, I know when you go to a place of business, they're going to try to sell you something, and they'll tell you anything they ought to tell you to get you to buy a car, to buy some furniture, or to make a deal. I'm not here to make a deal. I'm here to give you an opportunity of a lifetime. It didn't cost me a thing, but it cost my Savior his life on the cross of Calvary. I'm not here to make a deal with you. I'm here to share with you a truth that for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is not a deal. This is life and death. This is serious business. We're to share the gospel from a pure heart of compassion for souls that are headed to a devil's hell. I'm not here to make a profit on the kingdom. I'm here to kick people out of hell. I'll never forget when I used to work at McDonald's, they put me on morning shift. And I'd get up 5 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, be work at 5, and make biscuits. I've made more biscuits than you've ever eaten in your lifetime, I promise you. 
I can get up every morning and pour that buttermilk in that mix and put my hand down there and heave my guts out. That was the nastiest smell at 5 o'clock in the morning I ever smelled in my life, buttermilk. And I'd put those biscuits and I'd knead that dough, spread them out, and I'd cut them and put them in the trays and put them in the freezer, refrigerator, and then I'd put them in that oven. I cut the oven on when I first got there, turned it up to 375 degrees. And when I'd open that oven, that convection oven, that hot air would blow out on me. And every time I'd open that oven, I'd think about what hell must be like. I would have to endure that for a couple of seconds to slide that tray in and shut the door. But people who go to hell will be there forevermore, never escaping that fire, never escaping the burning, never escaping the flame. That ought to be enough to drive you and I to witness to every soul we come in contact with. I'm like E.D. Hill. I don't want anybody to go to hell. I want everybody to go to heaven. And we're to share the gospel without manipulation or trickery, just honest truth and love. We're to share the gospel with a pure heart of compassion for souls headed to a place nobody should ever have to go to. That's how much love Jesus had for man. But he died so no one would ever have to go to hell. If a man goes to hell, it's despite everything God and Jesus has done to keep him out of hell. Look at the next part of verse 2. Commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. We share the gospel to prick man's conscience so that it will move his heart to conviction, confession, and ultimately conversion of their soul to Christ. We just share the word of God. I'm not there to teach anybody anything. I'm not there to show people how smart I am. I'm not trying to prove how righteous I may be. I'm not righteous. I'm only saved by grace just like you are. I'm there to give them the Word of God. The Word of God does the job. You just quote the Scriptures. They'll take care of the heart. They'll draw the man. You don't have to say anything fancy. You don't have to be educated. You don't have to be well-mannered to know how to witness to people. All you got to know is how to love people enough to tell them the Word of God. Share with them the gospel, the truth of the Word, so that they will see in their heart they need a Savior and be convicted of their sin. Confess that they are a sinner and accept the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ to save them. That's our job. Then look at verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, whose image of God, should shine unto them. To fail to share the truth or to mishandle the truth of God doesn't change our eternal destination. But it will neither change the destination of the lost souls of men and women from hell to heaven. It is important, the message we give out, it is important that we use the Word of God. Because, folks, we're saved. We're going to heaven. But what about those who've never heard? Those who have never heeded the word of God. Those who have never heralded the call of his heart to theirs to be saved. They're the ones that we've got to reach. We're already reached. It's not about me and you. It's about them and him and getting them together with the word of God. That's what soul winning is all about. If we fail the gospel, we fail lost men and women. We fail God. It's those lost men and women. It's their eternal destination that has not changed. I don't ever want to be blamed for somebody going to hell. That would be the most horrible consequence I can think of as a Christian, is to be at fault for not reaching somebody with the gospel. If our gospel's hid, it's not hurting us. It's hurting the lost. It's hurting God. We've got to be serious about this thing. Look at verse 5. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. The ministry is not about you or I or our ego. I know some preachers all listen, but all they want to tell is how many people they got saved. Well, let's talk about how many they got baptized and then how many they discipled. So now, listen, if all you ever do is catch fish, you're not going to have anything but a rotten pile of stinking fish. you got to do something with what you catch. you got to fillet it and prepare it or freeze it or put it up or eat it. Same thing with souls. You can't just run to the Lord and let them sit there and die. You've got to disciple them. 
got to get them in the baptistry, make a public profession. You got to make sure that uh, it's not about me and you, it's about them getting closer to God. First of all, meeting God, being saved, then learning how to live for God. The ministry is not about how much or how well we look in the eyes of people. That doesn't matter. It's the people's souls. It's their souls. The ministry is about presenting the lost that the person, one person in all history, introducing them to Christ. The one person in all of history and that one person in all the universe who can save their souls from hell. I can't save them. You can't save them, but Jesus can. And we've got to introduce him to uh, them. We've got to get the us, the we, and the my out of it. We've got to get that out of it. We must fill our work with the Lord. We must make much of Christ and reflect his light to a lost and dark world so they can see Jesus high and holy and lifted up and how wonderful he is, how gracious he's been, and what he did for us on the cross of Calvary. Now let's look at verse 6. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. We've been commanded to shine the light, not given an option. It's a biblical command to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go out on the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that the house may be filled. It's a command. And folks, it's not an elective course in Christianity. It's a required course for the child of God to go out, those who have been redeemed, to help those who have not been redeemed, to know Christ and be saved. Look at verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. You know why a lot of people quit winning souls? They try to do it in the flesh. They don't let God do it through them. They try to do it themselves. And they fail, and they fail miserably because they haven't been a vessel. It's been more about them than about the Christ and the other person. We have to make sure we're just a vessel that God reaches, that we've got to be surrendered to him when we win souls. Verse 7 is clear about that. We have this treasure in the earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power of God, and not of us, the key to real soul winning, is realizing it's the power of God by the Holy Spirit working through me and you. We are merely the vessel through which God, the Holy Spirit, has to work. And for him to be able to work through us, we've got to be pure. We've got to have a good testimony. We've got to be close to God. We've got to be prayed up. We've got to be paid up spiritually studying the Word of God. We've got to be close to God for God to work through us. It's all him. And if we will surrender to serve him and share the soul-saving gospel and do it his way, it will work, and people will be saved. So, first of all, we've got to understand, A, the ministers must be determined not to fail. And the only way to not fail is to be spirit-filled and surrender to him and surrender to his will and way and work and make it all about Jesus. Now let's look at B, the mission from the Father. What is our mission? Luke chapter 19, verse 9. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. For as much as he is also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was what? Lost. Lost. Folks, Jesus was on a mission from heaven to earth, to this world, to bring man back to God. Now we're on the same mission to bring man back to Christ so Christ can bring him back to God. Salvation's come to this world. It's been made available through the cross and through the Lord Jesus Christ. No church, no preacher, no ministry can reach people for Christ. Just Jesus. We have to understand that. We have to live that. We have to realize we're on a mission from the Father, not to present ourselves or our work, but to present his work on the cross of Calvary. Our goal, our only mission, our only purpose, calling, and duty is to the lost. We owe them. If somebody hadn't owed us, we'd have never gotten saved. 
But somebody loved us enough and felt like they owed us the gospel. And they shared it with us. That's how we got saved. God sent Jesus. Now Jesus has sent us. Look at John 20, 21. Then said Jesus unto them, Peace be unto you. As my Father sent me, even so send I you. He sent us. Me and you. We're the ones to go out and win the loss at any cost. Hark is the shepherd's voice I hear. Out in the desert, dark and drear. Calling the sheep who've gone astray. Far from the shepherds, fold away. Who will go and help this shepherd kind? Helping the wandering ones to find. Who will bring the lost ones to the fold? Where they'll be sheltered from the cold. Out in the desert hear their cry. Out on the mountains wild and high. Heart is the master speaks to thee. Go find my sheep where'er they be. Bring them in, bring them in. Bring them in from the fields of sin. Bring them in, bring them in. Bring the wandering ones to Jesus. That's the message. That's the message. Bring them to Christ. Go out and answer the call of the Father to go into the world and be a missionary in your neighborhood, on your job, and to your family. Answer the call to share the message. It's so simple and so easy. It's just very few people will do it because they're afraid of it. Don't be afraid of it. No one was afraid to tell you. So you need to tell them. So first of all, you need to understand the minister needs to be determined not to faint. The mission is from the Father. Let's look see. Much fruit. Baptists don't like to hear this. And especially Calvinists don't like to hear this. But it's in the Bible and you can't take it out. Proverbs 11.30 says this. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that winneth souls, look at that word, is wise. We are required. It's not an option to bear fruit. Oh, it's the preacher's job to win souls. No, it's your job. It's my job. It's Ken's job. It's Jamie's job. It's Tony's job. It's my job. We are all to win the lost. We're all to share the gospel. We're all to bear fruit. It's not just the preacher's job. Those who are living right and living close to God will automatically want to win people to Jesus. There's something wrong with somebody that doesn't want to win souls. There is a spiritual sickness down in your heart and soul. If you don't want to win people to Jesus, you've got a real problem. It's called not being close to Christ. Because you can't be help me be close to Jesus and love souls. It's just going to rub off on you. It's just going to rub off on you. The other day, I hadn't told a charm joke in a while, so I'll tell one now. The other day, Charm been outside about three hours, and she come in and won't see me. So she jumped up on me, and I hugged her, and she went on back in the other room. Wendy come by and says, you need a bath. I said, what? She said, you need a bath. I said, I just had one. She says, well, you smell like a dog. I said, I reckon I do. Charm just jumped on me. Charm, now I smell like Charm. She rubbed off on me. Let me tell you something. You get up against Jesus long enough, and you're going to love the lost. You're going to love people. You're going to want to bring them to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. It's going to rub off on you. It'll be just as natural as breathing. If you win people to Jesus, they in return will also go out and win people to Christ. Then the church blooms and blossoms and produces more fruit. And the church grows and heaven's population increases. I want to be guilty of increasing the population of heaven. I want to be guilty of bringing people to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. God says a soul winner is the nearest person, or the, rather the smartest person in the universe. You want to be smart? Be a soul winner. You want to be wise? Be a soul winner. You want to do something worthwhile? Win the loss. You want to do something that's going to last? Win people to Jesus. Not those who own the most. Not those who control the most. Not those who have the most friends or the most power. Those who will benefit the most forever are those who... Win people to Jesus. See, the judgment of Christ is not going to be how much money you made, how many friends you impressed, how much power you had on earth, or how many positions you had, or how many uh, uh, pieces of paper you had on the wall. 
how much money you got in the bank. Not going to matter. The only thing going to matter at the judgment seat of Christ. Who did you bring with you to heaven? And God help us if we go alone. There's no excuse for going to heaven empty-handed. Jesus gave you eternal life. You ought to share that eternal life with others. John 15, 5 says, I'm the vine, you're the branches. He that abides with me and I in him, the same shall bring forth much fruit. Much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. See, if you're with him, you can do anything. If you're away from him, you're powerless. Here it is my Father glorified. Here's what pleases God. This is what makes him smile. What makes a grandma or grandpa smile? A grandchild. That's what makes him smile. You know what makes God smile? Just one more soul. Another soul in the fold. Here it is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. Folks, if you're going to be a true disciple of Christ, you have got to be a soul winner. Then finally, first of all, we have to be ministers determined not to faint. B, we have to know what the mission is from the Father. C, we've got to have a goal of bearing much fruit. And then D, we'll see a manifestation of our faith. I don't know how much you really love God. I can't tell. I can't see inside your heart. But if I see you leading people to Jesus, I know where your heart's at. And the same token, if I see you're not leading people to Jesus, I know where your heart's at. It's on yourself. It's on selfishness. It's not on righteousness. It's not about caring about the lost. Look at 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7. The trial of your faith be much more precious than a gold that perishes. Though it be tried with fire, might be found to praise and honor and glory, not now, but at the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, ye love, in whom though now ye see him not, yet believing. Ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the manifestation of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. I'm not talking about your soul personally, but the souls you win to Christ. You only have one soul. You don't have souls plural. You have souls that you win to Christ plural. Much fruit. Whatever we go through in our lives, the ultimate purpose is to shine forth the gospel around us. I know we're all having hard times. These are hard days. These are rough times to be living through. Personally, with your family, as a nation, as a church, it's tough. But there's nothing we go through that God doesn't do it for a reason. And that reason is to, that your faith be seen of other people. That he's really working in your life and making a difference in your life, and they're going to want him to make a difference in their life. That's the key. Every trial, every tribulation, every test that comes our way has a grand plan from God. If we, by faith, follow him and trust him through the storm, at the end, there will be a rainbow of souls saved for God's glory and for our effort. Heaven's not going to be the streets of gold. It's not going to be the gates of pearl. That's just going to be just sheer imagery. That's just going to be sheer trinkets in heaven. That rainbow of souls, though, that's what's going to make heaven. You're not going to be impressed by the streets of gold and the gates of pearl and the 12 foundations of different stones. What's going to impress me and you is when we walk in that throne room and see billions of people have been saved by grace. We're going to go, wow, look what Jesus did. And you know what? I want to be a part of helping him do that because he did it for me. I want to do it for others. It's all a work of faith. Be obedient by faith. Be faithful to serve by faith. Be dutiful to keep a pure testimony and praise God through everything you go through. Be patient to keep the good fight of faith. And, the, and in time, your seeds will grow and bring forth an abundance of fruit to the eternal kingdom of heaven. Just stick to it. Don't get frustrated. Don't get foolish. Don't fail. Be faithful. Be faithful. Work hard to bring people to Jesus. Yeah, it's going to take a lot of effort, a lot of submission, a lot of surrender, a lot of humility like we talked about in Sunday school this morning. You didn't hear Sunday school? Go back and listen to it on the internet. It'll bless your heart. We've got to be humble. 
The end of your faith is the salvation of souls, plural. Then finally, many shine as the firmament. Here's the reason why you want to win souls. If you want to make an impact, it's not making money. If you want to make an impact, it's not having power. If you want to make an impact, bring people to heaven. That's where to make the real eternal impact. And many of them, Daniel 12, 2, that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Now, this is saying everyone is going to live somewhere forever. Everybody's going to be resurrected. See, a lot of preachers are wrong on that. They say, oh, I'm the saved, going to be resurrected. Nope, everybody. Everybody's going to be raised from the dead. But those who are saved going to heaven. Those who are lost are going to hell. Some to everlasting blessing, some to everlasting contempt. Those who believe the gospel will live in heaven. Those who reject the gospel as paying for their sins, refuse to trust Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in their physical life, will die in sin physically, and die spiritually in hell for all eternity separated from God. But then Daniel makes a wonderful statement to every faithful soul winner. And that's what I want you to be, and that's what I want me to be, is a faithful soul winner. Here's what Daniel promises us. Those who are wise and win the lost will forever shine in the eyes of God like the stars shining in the heavens. I don't know about you, but I want to please my Father for what he did for me. I'm not worried about crowns. I'm not worried about a mansion. I want him to look at me one day and say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful to share my gospel. You see, we'll have Jesus forever. We'll have everyone that we've led to Christ Jesus forever as well in heaven. When I was a young man, I used to go in my aunt's bedroom, and my uncle, Tom, he loved to bowl. He loved to bowl. I'd go with him down here to Riverside Lanes and watch him bowl on Saturday night. And boy, he could roll that ball and sling them pins all over the place. He loved to bowl. He was a good bowler. He had about 25 trophies in his bedroom. I used to go in my eyes, used to get this big at all them gold and silver trophies, multicolored all over the room. He had won from playing bowling tournaments and uh, playing in leagues. Oh, he, he was a bowling trick. So I decided when I got old, I wanted to bowl. So I went and bought me a ball. Went down to the lanes in Lynchburg and got me a ball, what was burgundy, had uh, sparkles all over it. That thing had rolled and it sparkled like new money. I was impressed with myself. And I got on a bowling league team with the church. And first season there, we won. At the end of the season, the banquet, I got this great big trophy about this big and two little trophies for two splits I made. I was impressed with myself. That was 35 years ago. 35 years ago. And when Ruby died, I went back in that bedroom. I wanted those trophies. And you know what she had done when Tom died? She threw every one of them in the garbage can. Just broke my heart. She threw all them beautiful trophies in the garbage can. He had worked so hard for it and drove so many miles and spent so much money and invested so much time. She just threw them in the garbage. The other day I walked by my trophies sitting on my bookcase in my office. And you know what they had on them? Dust. I picked one of them up and they fell all to pieces. I said, my trophy fell all to pieces. This is terrible. Then I got to thinking, I guarantee you if I die tomorrow, one of the first things when you throw down the bank is in trophies where I wanted bones. You wouldn't care. You just throw them down the bank and be gone. Just like Ruby did with Tom. Just throw them out and got rid of Because you know what, folks? 35 years later, they don't really mean what they meant when I was 18 years old. Times have changed. I've grown up. I've matured. It's time for us to grow up as Christians. Our ego is not what's important. The spotlight on us is not what's important. It's that we're mirrors reflecting the gospel to lost people is what's important. 
It's how many people we bring down the aisle to make public profession. How many we walk to the baptistry and watch them follow the Lord and believers baptism. How many we walk out here and train them to walk in the ways of the Lord so they'll go out and do the same thing. So heaven can be populated with lost souls that are saved and redeemed. Folks, every soul I went to Jesus is going with me to heaven. All my trophies are going to burn up. But every soul I went to Jesus will never burn. They'll be with me forever. And once in a while I go back home and I run up on somebody I haven't seen in a long time. It's just so wonderful to see you. And I think about how it's going to be when I get to heaven. And those people I've led to Christ. I want to see Jesus first because he saved me. But I can't wait to see those people I've led to the Lord. Knowing that because I love Jesus more than I love myself, the result was somebody else met him. Somebody else didn't go to hell. And they're going to be with me forever in heaven. we got to get a real burden for souls. It's a labor of love. And we've got to learn to love the lost. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Let's have every head bowed. Every eye closed, no one looking around. At your home, just bow your head for just a minute. I want to talk to you. First of all, if you've never been truly saved, today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Romans 3.10 says, For all have sinned. There's none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 5.8, But God committed his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And Romans 10.13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth in the righteousness, and with the mouth confessions made unto salvation. Preach, I need to be saved. Pray this prayer silently while I pray it aloud. Just say, Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I believe you shed your blood, died, was buried, and rose again to pay my sin debt. And the best I know how right now I turn from sin to the Savior. And I ask Christ to save me and forgive my past. Settle my present by sealing me with the Holy Spirit and secure my future by writing my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Dear Jesus, save me right now. And Lord, help me serve you the rest of my days. Thank you, Lord, for saving me now. In Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, I ask you to go to our contact page. Let us know and give us your address so we can send you some information on what you need to do next as a Christian and how to disciple you and train you to be a Christian, follow the Lord. Christian, Maybe today you need to make a commitment to God. Maybe today you need to make a commitment to being a better lover of God so you can be a great lover of souls. Determine in your heart you're going to love people and love the lost and have that labor of love. Father, help dear people today, I pray in Jesus' name. I pray that you'll help them come to the conclusion in their heart and mind that they need to love the lost. If they'll love you and love your word, They'll love the lost, and they'll lead the lost to Christ, and then the lost will love you, and they'll live for you, and then they'll also lead people to Christ. And one day when we all get to heaven, we'll have completed our labor of love, and a love that started when God so loved the world that he sent Jesus. And then Jesus died and sent us, and he said, so send I you, Lord, help us go this week, wherever we are, pass our tracks. Help us invite people to church. Help us tell people of the glory of the life of Christ that lives within us. And help us, Lord, to love the lost and win them to Christ. In Jesus' name we pray and ask these things. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> we need to heed our call to win the lost. A couple of reminders for this week. There's no Bible study on uh, Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday, we will not be on the grounds, but we will be live again at 7 o'clock. So join us live either whether on Eternal Broadcasting or Facebook Live. We'll be continuing time of prayer 
and uh, digging back in God's Word. Tonight I ask you to just find someone. Hit your knees. This morning the message, if you didn't hear it, you can go back. It's spending time in prayer. Spend time in prayer finding someone that you can share the love of Jesus with. Win the lost at any cost. Let's dismiss tonight in prayer. Dear precious Father, we just thank you for your many blessings, Lord. I just thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy, Lord. I thank you for your word, Lord. Most of all, I thank you for saving my old wretched soul, Lord. Lord, help us, Lord, just to take your light to someone that's lost and dying. Lord, just to share the love and the grace that you have for all. Lord, we may see more souls saved. Lord, to those that are struggling, Lord, they'll find rest and hope in you. Lord, we just thank you for what you're going to do. It's in your precious and holy name I pray. Amen.